New for 2023 from CMMG, the compact action descent is now in 9mm. Their descent line took portability to a whole new level and now they've done it again. Available in 6.5 and 10.5 barrel lengths, this compact platform offers the modularity of the AR-15 while being compatible with a wide range of magazines and ammo. The soft recoiling radial delayed blowback system makes this pleasant to shoot and comes with the reliability that CMMG is known for. For more info, check out CMMG.com. An old Irish proverb says God invented whiskey to keep the Irish from ruling the world. So today on Tundra Tactical, in honor of our vaguely Irish heritage and that St. Patrick's holiday that's right around the corner, we are taking a look at the unbelievable and strange world of firearms invented and used by the Irish. So sit back, grab your favorite scotch, I mean whiskey, and let's start the show. Sing us a song of the Emerald Isle. If you are a believer in bigger is always better and love to scream more power, then our first Irish firearms legend is right up your alley. John Rigby, the most famed Irish firearms maker, and his son, John and William, are the inventors of the 450, 400, and 350 Nitro Express, better known as the I'm going to go shoot a rhino today round. This is the round your girlfriend tells you not to worry about. Beyond a penchant for hunting some of the largest and most dangerous animals on the planet, the Rigby's are also known for their famous dueling pistols. In short, if you want to kill something, the Rigby's would help you make that happen. Though there was one client the Rigby's never sold to, the British Army. <laughs> Big surprise there. As patriotic Irishmen, the Rigby's dislike of the Redcoats was only matched by their desire for the quick death of large mammals. Hmm, you know what? Sounds like these guys like big guns and they don't like the Redcoats. You know what, dudes? You should have just moved to America. You would have fit right in. The Fenian gun, an unusual over-under sliding action shotgun built exclusively in Ireland, is an old-school shotgun that had a unique double-barrel sliding action. Here in America, oh boy, we love our shotguns. Heck, even old Uncle Joe recommends them. Sure, the sliding action on this shotgun is a little interesting, but there is one big reason we salute the ode to Irish ingenuity, and that's designer J.K. Cavanaugh. JK was a second generation gunmaker whose father's gun making business had been forced out of Ireland because of regulatory and governmental bureaucracy. This is a bummer, man. That's, uh, that's a bummer. I bet the ATF, well, they're probably a little jealous of these guys. Oh, as if. Well, for JK, that was unacceptable. Being a good Irishman and always willing to put up the Dukes, JK turned his sights on who else than the Irish government itself. After years of work, JK forced the Irish Institute of Industrial Research and Standards to set up a whole department just so he could sell his beautifully crafted firearms to Irish customers. Get out and get those guns before they run out. And the government changes the laws. Now, you may wonder why a guy named Kavanaugh called his creation the Fenian Gun. That was JK's ode to making sure everybody knew what he thought of the British occupation of Ireland. The Fenians were a member of a mid-19th century movement to secure Ireland's independence from Britain and were a secret and outlawed organization of the British Empire. Well, Mr. Kavanaugh not only built guns, but he also made sure his own people could buy them and stuck it to the British while doing it. For that, Mr. Kavanaugh, we salute you. Now, you may have picked up on the fact that the Irish, well, they have a little bit of an issue with the British. As an American, I can understand that. After all, Britain is the nation that America declared its independence from. Britain burned the White House straight to the ground in the War of 1812, or as I like to call it, Independence Day 2, the James Madison Hoobaloo. I mean, just think about it. If America had lost those wars, we'd be boiling our meat and not in the fun way, folks. Not to mention, baked beans would be a part of a hell healthy breakfast, and that's just gross. Everybody knows a healthy breakfast needs bacon. That's just science, people. Give me all the bacon and eggs you have. Do you understand? 
It would be irresponsible for us to talk about Irish guns without discussing the guns of the Irish Provincial Republican Army, most related to the modern part of Irish history known as the Troubles, which ended in 1998 with the Good Friday Agreement. Now calling the history of Northern Ireland the Troubles is a bit of typical Irish understatement, and it's kind of like getting your arm cut off and just saying, well, it's just a scratch. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. Something that's never understated is, well, me, I guess. <laughs> Come on over and join me on Twitch at Tundra Gaming Live, where we play games almost every single day, and I will be live right as this video drops. One of the Irish Provincial Republican Army's most utilized weapons hails all the way from the shores of America. The AR-18 was the pinnacle of Eugene Stoner's design, hallowed be his name. Made from stamped and welded materials with a short stroke gas piston design, the AR-18 was superior in every possible way to the AR-15, except the AR-15 just looked cooler. Less concerned with things like looks and more concerned with, I don't know, stuff like effectiveness, the Irish Provincial Republican Army equipped itself with as many folding stock AR-18s as they could get their hands on. The rifles tended to travel in first-class style aboard the luxury ocean liner, the Queen Elizabeth II from the United States to Ireland. You have to admire the Irish pluck here and S-tier level of trolling of shipping weapons that you're using to fight the British on an ocean liner named after the Queen of England. Well, it seems no good joke could last forever. When the FBI started cracking down on the illegal shipping of arms, the Irish Provincial Republican Army was forced to find a new supplier of firearms. And let's just say that quality, well, it took a little bit of a hit. The Irish turned to famed Michael Jackson impersonator and dictator of Libya, Muammar Gaddafi. And oh boy, I think I might need a drink for this one. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit drinking. It turns out Colonel Gaddafi was more than happy to ship the Irish as many Libyan AK-47s as they could handle. I mean, what a letdown this had to be for the few guys in the provincial army that actually had to carry him, right? I mean, seriously, your pals Jack and Patrick are rocking top of the line US made AR-18s and then you draw the three leafed clover and get an AK-47 that smells like cheap Russian vodka that was thrown up on a bread line. Go ahead, my friend, inhale the fine aroma of despair that only communism can create. Look at it. Smell it. No. Take a deep breath and smell it. Oh, what is that? Also, let's think about the poor AKs for a minute that were pulled out of their dry desert environments and dropped into one of the wettest, dampest, and most moist places on Earth. And no, I'm not talking about your mother after her third glass of wine. I can honestly feel the rust developing on them right now. I mean, <laughs> no one probably noticed or cared because they were AK-47s, but still... Yikes. It's definitely a no for me, dog. If you enjoy it, when we say the joke that you're too afraid to say while at work, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. All right, let's move on. Let me ask you a question here, folks. How do you know that you're an insurgency on a budget? Well, that's an easy one. One of your standard sidearms is a Taurus pistol. That's right, the poor lads of Ireland were equipped with the Taurus PT-92 pistol imported from Brazil. There's not really much good to say about the PT-92 except that it is indeed a pistol, or at least it's in the shape of a pistol and has many pistol-like qualities. But let's be honest folks, Brazilian engineering in the mid-1980s, that's hardly a thing you want to bet your life on. No! No! I refuse- No! No! If Billy Mays were still alive, he'd sell the PT-92 as the ultimate jam-o-matic. Dented feed ramps that get worse over time? Check. You want a pistol with a bent guide rod that fails after 200 rounds? Can do. Or better yet, are you tired of those pesky brass cartridges actually ejecting themselves from your pistol after firing? No worries, cause the Taurus PT-92's extractor probably won't engage anyways. Honestly, the PT-92 is starting to sound like a Brazilian contender for the Jam Olympics against the 1911. Now, the PT-92 is the pistol you want to give to somebody when you absolutely do not want them to blow their cover on a covert operation. I can hear the mission briefing now. Look, this is technically a pistol, and it may even work, but really, the best thing to do is get in and get out without firing a shot, because you may not be able to fire anything else after that. Luck of the Irish to you. 
Who knew that Ireland had such a rich and international history with firearms? Is there a firearms maker that we missed? Comment down below, folks. And don't forget to join us next time when we still don't know what the heck we're doing. Slan.